All right, today I'm looking at another USB scope here. This is the O1 VDS6104. So this is uh, hopefully the last one I'll be looking at for a while, but this is the most expensive of the recent ones I've checked out at $370 right now on AliExpress. It's a four channel. You'll notice it's got the plastic uh, rings around here on the USB connectors. Uh, I don't know why my Rody Schwartz over here has those, but that's because it's isolated and high voltage. This one's not isolated or high voltage, uh, but it has them anyway, so it's just a little bit less sturdy than the metal ones. Uh, but on the back here, it's got a USB-C for control, which is nice, and it has a LAN also. That's a, uh, what this option has, and then also has this USB plug here, which is just to plug in this Wi-Fi adapter. So this one comes with the Wi-Fi option. And it comes with four scope probes too, which is nice. Um, and they're cheap probes, but they're pretty all right, I think. And um, they're one times 10 times. It has this little, little kit here. It's got a couple adapters. It's got like little probe tip spring and stuff. So you can do little tiny stuff. So it's a uh, hundred megahertz, one giga sample. And the interesting thing about that is the hand tech that I looked at last time is a 250 gigahertz, one giga sample. So, you know, the Nyquist is, you just gotta be two times the sample rate, but I think realistically for scopes, you pretty much want more like 10 times. So I think hundred megahertz for one giga sample sounds a little bit more realistic here for even though uh, it's less, it's probably about the same as the other one. It has a nice aluminum body, and I feel like it's a little better made than some of the other ones. Uh, I watched a teardown of it. It looks like the inside is laid out pretty nicely too, but I did notice that it gets um, hotter than the other ones that I've checked out recently. It's not crazy hot. It doesn't seem like it really has any fans or anything, but it's a little warmer, so there is that. The other nice thing about it is the software. So it has a, a nice API that uses some standard uh, National Instruments Visa protocol with Skippy commands. So we'll go over the computer and I can show you the standard software and like usual, some Python scripts to control it. So here we are to get the software. I'm gonna go to this website, link in the description and scroll down here. And here are all the links. And these links don't work super well, at least on my computer. So I had to right click and do save link as, and then that lets you uh, select where you want to download the zip files. If you check out this little spec sheet here, this is this one right here, the 100 megahertz has all these specs. Uh, this is kind of interesting. They have if the A version here, which does 12 bits and 14 bit resolution, which is pretty awesome, but I wasn't able to find this one for sale on AliExpress, so I don't know how much that costs or where you buy it. Here's the store for this one on AliExpress. I put the link in the description. So here's the files that I've downloaded off of their website. This is the one here you want to install. There's an installation guide and two things for the regular software. And then this other one here is the development one with the programming manual and the code demo here in C and lab view. So here's the built-in software once it's installed. And you can see right here, notice it pops up the visa address of the device. So we'll use that later for programming it. And this here is our one volt, but it's actually two volts because it's not using a scope probe. Yeah, one kilohertz sine wave. And you see down here you have your channels. Over here is the trigger stuff. And there's also this home button, which has a bunch more settings for different sampling rates and such. This down here is the time divisions and also you have moving it from side to side. It has a fairly big memory and then you can also adjust how many data points in the uh, collection here. And that I think gives you a 
greater ability to move it from side to side here with this this thing but this also you can use this in the program to tell it how many points you want to sample so you can get a whole bunch of points at once and this tells you the sampling rate now let's check out the API so I made a repo on github circuit analysis on and then here it is 6104 so I've got a few different files in here uh, but the two you want to check out here is the API examples and the Skippy examples. So we'll do the Skippy first. Just FYI, Skippy is the standard commands for programmable instruments. And this is pretty cool because this is an old national instrument standard where you can send uh, text strings to the instruments to control them. So here's the repo on my computer. And this PDF is the official programming manual with the Skippy commands. And a previous employee of mine, David, wrote a wrapper for this. And that's this file here, oonvdia6104.py. And it has this manual for it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is show this example, the skippy example.py. This is just directly using the skippy commands. And then this API example, that's using this wrapped API. So let's check it out. So all you have to do to communicate with anything that uses Skippy is use this library, PyVisa. And we're going to use matplotlib also. So if you don't have these installed, then you got to do the pip install you know, PyVisa matplotlib. This is the address here, which you get from their official program when you open it up. It shows you the address. Then this here is creating the PyVisa object here creating an instrument by opening the resource at the address. And then this here, uh, I got here from page 58 of the official programming manual. This is how you figure out what your sample rate is. And it's dependent on a few different settings, like if you uh, are doing single input, dual or quad, and then what points per division you've selected, and then whether or not you're doing the eight 12 or 14 bit. Uh, in our case, we only have the 8 bit. So then you come down here. There's a little note that we're using one kilohertz wave with a one volt peak. So here you do the standard. This is pretty much for any Skippy device. You can do this identification tag. Uh, when anything has a question mark, that's a query. So we're doing dot query here. Um, if it then it's returning a response, so we're going to print that. If you're not getting a response, then you do dot write. So these are just setting a bunch of settings. So here's all the time ones here, time scale, offset, and then we're doing the voltage scale uh, for channel one. It's kind of nice, these commands you just write, like colon channel one, colon offset space, the value, and you can put the units here or not. It's kind of like spice where I don't think this one really matters and the cases don't really matter, but it does do the multipliers like milli and micro and stuff. So down here we set up the triggering and then down here is the stuff to capture the waveform and we're telling it we're going to get a thousand points and then fetch it. And this one's doing a binary fetch. So that gives us this array here of data values. And then down here, this is just a number. And the number, I believe, is between 0 and 6400 or something. So when we come down here, we're just going to leap through the 1,000 data points. And then uh, we've got these empty, let's see, time and channel one voltage data arrays here and we're just going to append to those in this loop to create the actual time which is just the iterator divided by the sample rate which is calculated using that function at the top and then the voltage here this is just calculated with this formula here that was from the programming manual then down here we do the standard matplotlib and we plot the points so let's try it out Sometimes it gets funky stuff and you just have to rerun it. 
And there we go. There's the waveform. You can see it's one volt peak, so it's two volts peak to peak. And then the thousand points here is up to four milliseconds. So now let's check out the API example. So this one follows the exact same format. It's not using this get sample function right now, but I left it commented out here because that I think needs to be implemented in the future. Uh, here you create a scope. Uh, we're just including now this other file and that's including the PyVisa and that stuff in it. So I'm giving it the address and then we're just using scope dot and whatever it is. In these, you can just set these variables equal. Um, in the case if you just got one parameter you're setting, and if you have multiple parameters, then it's a function, you give it multiple inputs. So it's the channel and then the value. So we set up the time, the voltage, the trigger, exact same as before. And then for capturing it, same setup. And then for plotting it, instead of directly using matplotlib, there's this support uh, file here. And when we run this, we get the same thing, but you'll notice here that the numbers on the bottom are not quite the same here. So the last thing I'm going to do is plug in the little Wi-Fi dongle real quick and just see if we can send some commands that way. So let's open up the software again here. And note, this is that Visa address again here. So click on that. We're connected. Now if we go to this home screen, utilities, it looks like, the network, uh, we can do the Wi-Fi setup. Connection type, hmm. Let's see. All right, so we'll close all this. They had a note thing in here about using this net assistant to connect to it. So I downloaded this, I'll put a link in the description. A little bit sketchy, but it doesn't seem like it's got any viruses. <laughs> So here's that Skippy command network gadget. So we got it here on TCP client. For this one, we'll do the address that they had listed there, which was 1.172. And the remote port, that was 8866. Let's see if we can do anything with that. Um, oh, okay, so this is access point and this is station. So I think access point is when it's making a hotspot so you can connect directly to it and then station is when it's connecting to your network. So then I think you've got to put your network name and password in here if it's on station to get it to connect. Otherwise you would use, with the access point, you would use this um, as the credentials that you would then put in your computer to connect to it. So let's try that. Okay, so that seems like it might have worked and then I had to open the program again and check the settings and it had a new IP address which is on my network now. Click connect and it's connected so I'm going to send the identification. And So it says after you send here uh, you need to send a carriage return slash in or slash r. Boom! Alright, so that was a struggle. I just needed to check this use escape characters box here and now it's working. So let's see. Yeah, you do have to put a new line with every command. So you just put the command, put a new line. So we'll try the voltage one again. Yep, okay. It's getting the voltage scale. So I guess this is a way to test commands over the network and send and receive them. So we probably need some sockets or HTTP library to uh, do that with the Python code, but I'll leave that as an exercise for now. Well, you made it all the way through. That's pretty impressive. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.